Everybody, welcome in this room, in your room, online. Welcome to the crossing. Hey, just uh, a little FYI. Um, every weekend, we are averaging more than 300 views online uh, with our uh, streaming. And so what a blessing that is. And so grateful for that. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for your, uh, your constant encouragement. And uh, welcome to sermon time, right? And I want to say welcome to the kiddos in the house. Today's Family Fusion. And uh, so we have a Family Fusion is one of those days that all of our kindergarten through fifth grades come and join us. And so if you are younger than fifth grade, would you just like raise your hand and say, here I am. Okay, the only one to raise their hand. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right. But I didn't hear anything. I, I see you, but I didn't hear. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We love that you have ministry in the back most of the times, but we also love an opportunity for you to be in here. And uh, so welcome, kiddos. Now, uh, kiddos, do you ever have questions about God? Yeah. <laughs> Created a monster and I love it. <laughs> Do you ever have questions about Jesus? Do you ever have questions about the church and the, the Bible and the world? We know you do. We know you do because all of us do. That's why we're in this sermon series, Foundations. In this sermon series, it's been a great series. In this sermon series, we've been finding answers to some really great questions. Questions like, is there a God? Yes. And if so, what's he like? Does he, does he talk to us? Yes. Can we talk to him? Right? If there is a God, why is there so much suffering? Did you know we have an enemy? Did you know Jesus defeated that enemy? Then what should we do? You know, how do we respond to this grace, right? I mean, what's the point? How do we make, make the most of our lives? And why is the church important? Great questions. Now today, uh, kiddos, just, that was just to catch you up, but today we want to answer another question, and that, it, it, this question concerns the mission of the church of Jesus. Now, the mission of the church of Jesus ought to be the mission that Jesus said it ought to be, amen? Makes sense? And Jesus said in Matthew 28, some of his last words to his disciples before, you know, beaming up, all authority, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He has all authority. And then he commissioned you go, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and I'll be with you always to the very end end of the age. Now, my personal translation of that is reach, baptize, teach. Reach, baptize, teach. That's what he said. Now, our, our translation of that as a church um, is a little bit different, but the same thing, and say it with me, our mission here at the Crossing, developing devoted followers of Jesus who will Develop devoted followers of Jesus who will develop, you know, you get it, right? And here's what we know, that when the Lord gets your heart, he's going to want to use you to get someone else's heart. 
And when you really know him, he wants to use you to go ahead and make him known. How? How do we do that? How do we effectively influence others for Jesus? That's the question we want to answer today. How do we influence others for Jesus? I'm excited today, and I want you to watch this video because some of our uh, Crossing Kids uh, put a video together that really is going to unveil our text for today. Check this out. Colossians 4, 5 through 6. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, way to go, kiddos. Love that. It was Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity, right? Let your conversations always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. What a great passage. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think we ought to back up a moment and let's add some previous verses to add some context. Colossians chapter 4, starting with verse 2, tells us this. He's speaking to us. Hey, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that the Lord would open the doors for our message, that we may be proclaim the mysteries of Christ, for which I'm in chains. And pray that I would be able to speak as clearly as I should. And then he turns it to us. Be wise in the way you walk. You act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. Lord Jesus, bless the preaching and the receiving and the putting into action your words today. Amen? Amen. Let's go. Uh, Somebody uh, remind me to make sure we get that door fixed this week. <laughs> Great day. Tuesday, yes. I love what the Apostle Paul does in this passage. The Apostle Paul in this passage, the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit Apostle Paul, who, by the way, was sold out to the mission of Jesus. He tells us how to effectively influence others for Jesus. And it all comes down to this. If you want to be effective, an effect, uh, effective influence on people for Jesus, it's really all about having great conversations. It really all comes down to that. It's all about having great conversations. Now, the first conversation, if you really want to influence somebody else for Jesus, the first conversation that you need to be having is a personal conversation with God. That's why I backed up to add verses 2, 3, and 4. It's that kind of the context. Because that, it says, be devoted to prayer. And pray for open doors for our message. And pray that we can proclaim it as clear as we, we, we can. Right? And so it starts there. If you want to influence anyone for Jesus, it starts right there in our conversation with God. Listen, before we talk to people about God, I think we ought to be talking to God about those people. Amen? And honestly, here's what I believe. Nothing good, nothing good will ever happen in the kingdom of Jesus unless it's the result of us praying about it, inviting him in. Be devoted to it, especially influencing others. Be devoted to it in your prayers. Pray for open doors. Pray for gospel opportunities. Pray for the uh, ability to see them. Pray for the courage to take them when you see them, right? So brothers and sisters in Christ, please, 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 please add gospel opportunities to your prayer list. The first conversation we ought to be having is a personal conversation with God. Now, if you want to influence other people for Jesus, I want to suggest uh, that we ought to be having honest conversation with ourselves. Honest conversation with ourselves. Our text says, be devoted to prayer. Our text says, um, 
walk, you know, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders or the way you walk, you know, with outsiders. And those two things immediately allow some questions that I feel like you and I ought to be asking ourselves, a conversation with ourselves. The first, the first question is this, am I praying for opportunities to point people to Jesus? Am I praying for opportunities to influence someone else for Jesus? It's a great question to ask yourself because from my ministry experience, most churchgoers do not even pray about it. <sighs> Are we that narcissistic? Are we that so self-absorbed that we won't even pray and ask the Lord to bring people to Him? So, so please, please, please add gospel opportunities to your personal prayer list. Let's pray about it. The second question I think we ought to ask ourselves, does my walk and my talk match? Does my, does my behavior and my belief match? I mean, does my presentation of myself and the proclamation match? Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Here's why. The world is watching you. The world is watching you, and if what they hear and see don't match, you cannot be effective. Paul writes in Philippians 1.27, here's one of my favorite. He writes this, whatever happens, Whatever happens, even if you hit your nail with the, the wrong nail with a hammer, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel. Amen? Listen, uh, unfortunately, uh, but for the most part, the only Bible that our world is ever going to read is the daily walk of the Christians around them. That's why our walk and our talk have to match. Make sense? The third conversation I think we ought to have with ourselves, am I even looking for opportunities? Am I even looking for opportunities? Our passage says this, make the most of every opportunity. I love that. Make the most of every opportunity. Am I even looking for opportunities? Uh, the Greek, the literal phrase is simply this, buy up their time. What? Yeah, buy up their time. Buy up their time. The people you want to influence for Jesus, buy up their time. And I think that would translate to us is go to dinner with them. Meet them for coffee at the Starbucks. Take them out on your boat. Go to a game together. Have them into your home. Do something together. And while you're together, look for opportunities to wiggle in Jesus' conversation. Listen, our world is desperate for the Word of God. I mean, our world is desperate to know the truth of God, to understand the grace of God. Our world is desperate to have answers for life. They are so desperate to know. They need to know eternity is real, but hope is available, and that they could, too, be forgiven. But am I, am I even looking for opportunities? If you want to influence others for Jesus, I think it's going to start with a great conversation with God. I think it's going to require an honest conversation with ourselves. And then Paul comes to careful conversation with others. Did you see verse 6? Here's where the power is. Then careful conversation with others. It says, let, let your conversation always, always, always be full of grace. Season with salt that you may know how to answer everyone. First, let your conversations always be full of grace. Always full of grace. Earlier in the year, we had a whole sermon series on the, on the topic of grace. Do you remember the definition, the biblical definition of grace? Grace is stepping toward, leaning into with the intent to bless like crazy. That's what grace is. I'm stepping into, into, I'm leaning toward with the intent to bless like crazy. Friends, that, that needs to be our posture to those outside of Christ. It, it should be our posture to everyone. 
especially those outside of Christ, because we want them in Christ. Always full of grace. Always. I love what uh, Paul says, Ephesians 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, Christian. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that they may that it may benefit or bless like crazy those who are listening. Always full of grace. Now that means <laughs> what's going to be eliminated from our conversations are criticism and insults and lies and slander and gossip and, you know. And can I remind you that applies to your clicking and posting as well? Always full of grace. Here's my, here's my favorite one, uh, season with salt. Uh, kids in the room, uh, how many of you love corn on the cob? Raise your hand if you love corn on the cob, right? All right, anybody else in the room love corn on the cob? Summertime favorite, baby. Corn on the cob. However, it better come with butter and salt. Am I right? Butter and salt. Here's what the Holy Spirit is saying in this passage. If you want to influence other people for Jesus, it, our conversations need to always be full of butter and salt. It, it's what he's saying. You see, when we, talk about, when we talk about Jesus and we talk about the church and we talk about the Christian life, we need to make that conversation as appetizing as possible. We need to, be, we need to present it in such a way their mouths start to water. They want more. Butter and salt. Here's the key to doing that. Be excited about Jesus in your life. Just be excited about Jesus in your life. If you're excited about Jesus in your life, then it's able to come out when you get the chance. Listen, here's the deal. There is no way you could salt your conversation with other people about the deliciousness of Jesus if you're not tasting yourself, right? And I think every day, every day, you and I ought to be running to the scriptures and we ought to be looking for more reasons of why knowing Jesus is the greatest thing in the world. And then we ought to get off our knees, happy in him, and we're poised, ready to season with butter and salt. He said one more thing, that you may know how to answer everyone. Now, at first, when I read that, my mind immediately went to, well, what if I don't know what to say? What if I don't have the right words? What if, I, what if I just don't know what to say? But I want you to hear the text again. That's not what he's pointing to. The text says, so that you may know how to answer everyone. If you're a follower of Jesus, you already know the what. It's the how that really matters. It really is the how that matters. How you say it really matters. I believe every conversation that you're going to have, every conversation that you're going to have has the potential to advance the kingdom. Now, it may be a discipleship conversation uh, for those in Christ, or it may be an outreach conversation for those outside of Christ who you want in Christ. But every conversation has an opportunity to bless people. And church, I believe Jesus wants us to have such conversations with people. We leave them thinking and smiling encouraged and grateful that they actually had an interaction with us. Amen? It really matters how you say it. In fact, Peter said, 1 Peter 3, but revere in your heart, Jesus is Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anybody to ask you for the reason, for the hope that you have. And look at this last phrase, but do this with gentleness and respect. It really matters how you say it. Now, this world is empty. Those outside of Christ are so empty. Just watch the news, emptiness abounds. So empty. But here's what I realize. It, it really is true. Because the world, those outside of Christ are so empty, they are actually open to being filled. In fact, they're seeking it. In fact, the people of the world who are so empty, they're, they're actually interested in spiritual conversations. They really are. They're open to it. Church, we have the truth. 
We have the answers for life. We have a message of love and joy and peace and forgiveness. And Jesus is like, now get out there with it. Get out there with it. Go in all the world. Get out there with it. So church, I think we ought to get out there with it. Amen? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I had a conversation with Jim Messelwitz of our church. And uh, they're not in the room. Actually, Jim, Paula, I want to say hi. I, they're watching online because they're snowbirds. They're already in Florida. But a couple weeks ago when I was in Florida, I got to catch up with Jim. And uh, in our conversation, Jim says this, Mark, I just, here's where we've landed. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, my wife, Paula, and I, uh, we've just determined life is short and we just need to get at it. And here's where we've landed. We just decided we're going to put it out there. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, life is so short. People need to know Jesus. And we have found they are interested in talking spiritual things. So we just determined we're just going to put it out there. Well, what, I'm like, How, what do you mean put it out there? What do you do? And he says, here's what we do. When we're out with somebody for dinner, or maybe we're uh, playing pickleball with somebody, or we're just hanging out with somebody, uh, in part of our conversation, we just put it out there. And we'll just drop, we'll just do it like this. We'll just put it out there. We'll say something like, well, Paul and I, my wife and I are followers of Jesus. And we believe that he actually emptied himself from heaven to come to earth to reveal God to us. And actually, he did an amazing job at that in his miracles. And the Bible tells us that he actually came to go to a cross to die in our place for our sin, our forgiveness. Three days later, he came out of the grave. He ascended to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God to be our great high priest. And someday, he's coming back to get us. And then he said, and then how's, here's how I end that rant. What do you think about that? Yes! I love that. I mean, that's putting it out there, right? What do you think about that? And he said, ah, he has landed, he and Paula have landed so many awesome conversations about our Lord. I feel like the church hasn't really done a great job staying on mission. Let's do a better job with the mission of Jesus. And so let's leave here, right? Let's leave here wanting, praying for, looking for, starting and having some great conversations. Amen? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I want to plead forgiveness of us for not taking your mission serious. Forgive us for not even praying for opportunities. Lord, may gospel opportunities be at the top of our prayer list these days. And give us eyesight to see those opportunities and the courage to take them and find ways just to brag about you. Thank you, Lord, for such a great church family. May we be strong in influencing others for you. In the name of Jesus.